Welcome. We're going to talk about free agent running backs. There's three major free agent running backs that I think everyone are talking about, and we're going to discuss them all here, Dynasty Redraft, all of that. So, Conan, why don't you jump into the first of our running backs? Yeah, so number one, we've got Leonard Fournette, playoff Lenny Boo! himself. Sorry, I should have put that <laughs> in in post, but go ahead. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, obviously he is no longer at this moment a Buccaneer. Um, and, you know, rumors say that he may end up there. That might be one of the only spots that will want him back. But um, I just kind of wanted to look last year. Obviously, he was still a top 12 running back in PPR. Um, which seems crazy because it doesn't, it didn't really seem like he had a great year. Um, but I think really what happened is he got so many targets and just kind of PPR his way up into that RB one range. Um, because, you know, as we know, targets are way, way, way more important for a running back. They are. Yeah. <laughs> and so, I mean, I I've even gone in and done, I did a thread last off season actually, where I was looking at how much, or how many uh, carries is one target worth for actually all a, a lot of different players. And basically, no matter what player it was, it was still like at least two or three carries equals the points they get from one uh, target. So, you know, all that being said, the targets are necessary. That's what's going to drive those high PPR, those weekly finishes. So, I mean, to that point, he was the RB12 in week four. He went three carries for negative three yards on the ground. That was his entire line. I remember that game. And he was a top 12 running back on the week. <laughs> I remember <laughs> that so one. That was crazy. Th that's, I mean, that is what happens when you get seven catches for 57 yards and a touchdown in the air. <laughs> so as a running back, that's what you need. Um, and so, like we said, he really did not do well on the ground. So I've actually got a, a fun question for you, right? Question time. So, yep. So so the league average among the entire league of running backs, the league average is around 4.1 yards per carry, right? So Leonard Fournette, he played 15 games last season. How many of those 15 games do you think he averaged more than just the, the league average? 4.1 yards per carry. How many games Great. do you think he beat that threshold? You nailed it. Three games, one out of every five cheat. games. <laughs> and so, I mean, if we're looking at that, not, not too great, not too great. But again, these, the yards per carry. Yes, it was, you know, it, he was at 3.5, not great, but he got so many catches, so many targets, so much work in the air that it almost just like offset it. And it, it didn't really matter in terms of his PPR finish. I mean, he was, like I said, RB 12 on the year in standard that's RB 18, you know? So the, those, those catches, they really make a difference. They really do. Um, and I mean, he obviously, again, not a great year, but if I was, I was just looking at, you know, some, how many times did Leonard Fournette really make a difference for your team? Right. So I'm going to count that as a top five weekly finish. So how many times did Leonard Fournette finish in the top five among running backs on a week all of last year? He actually finished top five more times than guys like Dalvin Cook, Alvin Kamara, Joe Mixon, Nick Chubb, all guys that, you know, maybe not didn't have besides Nick Chubb didn't have their best year, had a down year, but still guys that finished in that RB2 range that we likely are looking at them now thinking, they're much better and more usable, more valuable than Leonard Fournette. But I mean, I just wanted to look and sure enough, you know, he was a difference maker more times than some of these bigger names that we see out there that we, you know, kind of thrown in the same range or later. Um, so I thought that was really interesting. And I think it just kind of goes to show that if he lands in the right spot, I, and I think for Leonard Fournette, that kind of means like if he goes back to the Buccaneers where he's used to playing, yes, Brady is gone, but Rashad White's really the only guy in town. I think he still will be a very serviceable, you know, at least at like a bot or a lower end RB2 if he were to go back to Tampa. But I know you definitely don't have similar thoughts. Similar thoughts. I mean, <laughs> he was horrible. 
He was horrible. The only reason he was good is because the Buccaneers manufactured him a bunch of running back touches that were from Tom Brady and are not going to happen again. I mean, Baker Mayfield is not known for being a check down artist. We know we've been complaining about Nick Chubb and his lack of pass catching for years. So mm-hmm. I don't, yeah, no, I have no interest in Leonard Fournette uh, going back to the Bucs. I don't think he's going back to the Bucs. And do you, do you have a spot you are, you've heard more maybe than anywhere else or, or a spot you actually would say, uh, okay. Okay. No, no, I no. think Leonard Fournette is done. I think Leonard Fournette is done. I think Leonard Fournette mm. was a product of Tom Brady. Tom Brady liked Leonard Fournette. And I think Leonard Fournette is done. I think he's done. I don't expect him. I think his career might be over. Yeah. I mean, that's definitely fair. I just think, I mean, if, if a team is, you know, I, I don't expect, say he goes back to the Buccaneers. I don't expect the 80 plus uh, targets that he's gotten the last two years. Like you said, Tom Brady, or yeah, Brady's not there. Baker's not known as, you know, an option like that. But um, like, I, I just think there's a possibility where he gets, you know, 50, 60 targets in an offense and still somehow PPRs his way to an RB, you know, 23 finish which is still far far higher than he's kind of currently going and has been kind of around so that's just kind of my thought whereas he's being completely left for dead i understand i understand it but if you can capitalize in any way then i'm kind of looking i'm still intrigued a little bit yeah i'm not (laughs) and that's fair So, yeah. yeah, I mean, I think I think we're good with we're good oh, yeah, with no, Le- we're good we're good right. There's literally uh, been zero rumors of anyone signing him all off season, so we're good. Yeah, I, I do think that's after after the first week where we heard a couple teams. I I haven't heard anything yet either. Nothing at all. Yeah, you're you're right. Next so, one. Let's go on to a even more exciting name, right? Explosive. I, think so. <laughs> I mean, I I, th- I do think he has more value um but so we're, we're getting to ezekiel elliott um obviously last year was still kind of working side by side with tony pollard and they actually both kind of finished pretty pretty highly in the the season long um obviously tony pollard was a stud uh he was rb8 on the year but even even uh zeke i mean if you look at his his season last year he i mean weeks set six through 15 and then there's a little gap where he was hurt for a, a game or two, but he was he was actually really consistent, right? So if if you wanted a guy in that RB two spot that's going to get you you know twelve to eighteen points, he basically he got that you know seven straight weeks, and you know twelve to eighteen points that's not nothing to sneeze at, you know. And I I think he's not going to score twelve touchdowns again. It, that's fair. I do think the goal line work really propelled that season long finish where he had that 12, 12 rushing touchdowns. He had one in every game, at least one in every game for like seven straight weeks. And I I was, I was curious, you know, he was, he had a really good stretch of seven games. It's like half the season. So I wanted to look at kind of how he finished on, on each week. And so I was actually surprised to find that he actually had the longest streak of finishing in the top 15 at running back among any any players you know uh, even some of these studs they slip up once once every few weeks or whatever they don't quite finish in that really that upper echelon the top 15 or so running backs sometimes they have an rb2 lower rb2 rb3 week but he actually had the longest streak of finishing as a weekly top 15 guy and that was seven straight weeks and i think i think that's pretty you know Obviously, goal line goal line work really, really helps that scoring one touchdown, getting six free points every single week. That certainly helps that finish. But I mean, I do think there's something left in the tank. I mean, he went 10. He was double digits in 10 of his 15 games. So two thirds of his games. That's pretty good. He had had 14 or more PPR points in eight of 15. That's a little bit more than half. And really, when I was looking at that list, who had more games? of 10 plus points who had more games of 14 plus points. The only guys on that list are guys like Christian McCaffrey, Austin Eckler, Saquon Barkley, Derek Henry, Josh Jacobs, Nick Chubb. 
So like really elite, elite options. Those are the only guys that had more 10 point, 10 point games, more 14 point games. He was right behind some of those guys. So, uh, I mean, right now we don't know where he's going to go, but I do think, you know, he, he does look like he's lost a step, but as a, like a goal line back, <laughs> a couple steps, couple lost a leg. Um, yeah, that's about right. <laughs> but I mean, if we're looking, you know, as someone that can just be kind of like a little grinder goal line guy, like I, I do think there's still something there where I don't think, you know, regardless of where he goes, he's just going to be nothing. Um, I do think there's a lot of spots where we're going to be like, okay, I don't really care about him, but I mean, I think there's at least like one or two teams where I'd, you know, I'd raise an eyebrow and I'd say, okay, he might be a, a usable piece, even if it's just this year. I don't think we're looking, you know, beyond this year really, but even just this year, um, if he can pull out a lower end RB two, even like a high end RB three finish, like that's, that's usable in some formats and in some leagues and stuff. So yeah, I, I, I don't know. He's someone I'm surprised hasn't signed yet because unlike Leonard Fournette, whose main role last year was as a pass catcher and he was actually very bad at it, despite the high volume, Ezekiel mm -hmm. Elliott has a very clear role. He was not that bad on the ground. He wasn't great, but he wasn't bad. He absorbed a lot of volume, was pretty good at the goal line like he's always been. There is a role mm -hmm. for Ezekiel Elliott. The role is available on the Cowboys if he chose to go back. But that role is available, unlike Leonard Fournette, who really doesn't fit anywhere. There's no one who really needs Leonard Fournette. Ezekiel Elliott, there's a lot of spots where you need that role to take up those targets that you don't want to give someone who's more explosive. You know, some of those teams filled that role in the draft. The Jaguars filled that role in the draft with Tank Bigsby. But there are mm -hmm. a few teams. It's funny. It's actually a lot of the ones we're talking about. The Buccaneers. Le Ezekiel Elliott fits there a lot better than Leonard Fournette. Rashad White should be used more in the passing game, should be more used in the explosive way, you know, on the outside the goal line. I don't know. Ezekiel Elliott would fit that role better than whatever Leonard Fournette was doing. The Cowboys mm -hmm. as well. The Chargers, of course, to fill that Melvin Gordon role of old. Um, they, they would make sense. Yeah. Uh, the Broncos, if Javante Williams cannot play, would make sense for Ezekiel Elliott. I do think Ezekiel Elliott might be waiting for an injury to get a starting role because I don't think a starting role is available right now. I think mm -hmm. perhaps if there were an injury in training camp, there are places where a starting role would be available. Right now, there really isn't any. There's no starting role for him. Mm -hmm. But like if, uh, you know, I don't want to name any names, but there are quite a few teams that only have one running back better than Ezekiel Elliott, where if that one running back, there's probably about 10 teams that have exact that have one running back that's better than him and no one really behind them that's good enough. And if that one guy goes down, they could be interested in Zeke's services as a starter. So that's, I think, what he's waiting for. Unlike Leonard Fournette, I do not think Ezekiel Elliott's career is over or anything along those lines. I think he will sign. I expect him to play week one this year. And I think he's going to make a decision in training camp. I just think he's not interested in going OTAs or even training camp. I think he's going to make a decision in July or August, but he's going to play. So of these guys, he's the one that I am still drafting in startups, maybe in a redraft in like RB50 range, you know, if, if nobody, if there's no one else to take, he's the one I'm still drafting. I, I think he has a year left to play. Yeah. And I, I think that's, that's where, that's the important part where right and now a, that's where he's going. Is yeah, like he's RB59 RB in Dynasty startups. <laughs> so I actually don't hate it. I don't hate it at that price. Whereas Leonard Fournette mm -hmm. was RB61, I'd much rather pay up two more spots to get Ezekiel Elliott, who I think has a lot more left. That's fair. And I I, I wanted to touch on one last thing before we move on to our last guy. But, I mean, like I said, Zeke, you know, he had 12 rushing touchdowns. He he, he finished, you know, pretty respectable uh, year-end kind of finish. But, you know, we're, we're looking at Tony Pollard. I, I think that's just like a name we got to keep monitoring, get get excited about as as time goes on, whatever it is. But it's just like the, the dude was RB8 despite hitting 60% snap share twice in his 16 games because Zeke was there, you know, picking up 40, 50, 60% himself every game. Um, and I, I think the, the thing I'm specifically looking for is if the Cowboys do decide to bring back Ezekiel Elliott, 
what that kind of does to Pollard kind of among ADP and just consensus ranks. And I'm assuming, you know, maybe not drastically, but he will probably go down a couple spots. And I think I'm all for that because I would love to scoop him up even later than he's going. Well, I'm going to have no Tony Pollard because I've heard some people say that he should be RB1 in in ranks this year. And that is absolutely insane. So I'm going to have no Tony Pollard this year. I I think that's a little bit, a little bit great, like over... over hyping but but let's let's move on to the the last one who i think is barely worth our time but you have something to say about him yeah i mean last guy i think we'll we'll spend the least amount of time on this guy i don't think he needs needs as much as you know zeke and lenny but kareem hunt you know a name that we haven't really talked about really haven't heard much from in in the off season um Obviously, the team kind of tried to trade him during the year, didn't find any takers. Um, And I think what we've kind of forgot is like we look back at Kareem Hunt, just the beginning of the season before, you know, all the trade rumors, all the trying to get him out of there before the trade deadline. Like if we look back first, you know, first few games, just even looking at week one, you know, he came out really hot, 23 PPR points. He was the RB4 on the week. And then from there, no other finish inside the top 20 on the week. Just, just that was his, he, he reached that peak week one. And then it was just all downhill and plateau after that. Yeah. He's, he's done. He, he scored two of his four touchdowns in week one. <laughs> and then, I mean, he, he yeah, is I mean, so done. Yeah. I mean, and I, I think, you know, obviously the touchdowns did a lot into that, that weekly finish, but I think there's just like a clear like drop off in just the work and just everything kind of involved after kind of like week five, week six, where you could see like a very clear uh, just drop off in the amount of work he was getting. Like first five weeks, he's, you know, he's breaking 11 carries uh, a game. You know, he's almost at 50 rushing yards a game, almost three catches like, you know, he's over 12 PPR points a game. That's first five weeks, you know, from, from a guy that we we drafted as basically like a, a handcuff to Nick Chubb with a little bit of standalone value, like 13 points a game. I that's, that's pretty good. And then it just went crashing, crashing downhill where the rest of the season after that, it was barely over five carries, barely over 18 rushing yards a game and just about five PPR points a game. So, I mean, we're looking at that. That's, that's just not going to cut it at all. And I think, right there you you see it and it's 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 weird but i mean i i agree mostly in that he he doesn't look like he's really got it anymore but i I did want to kind of look um just like did something happen to the team like i i don't know but the it just seemed like the first five weeks like the team really like had it going a little bit more than just kind of the rest of the year i don't know if they were trying to get ready for the return of Deshaun Watson kind of earlier in the season or whatever it is. But even if you look at someone like Nick Chubb splits those first five games, as opposed to the rest of the season, there's a significant drop off. Like we're talking a couple less carries, almost more than 40 less rushing yards per game. And just more than eight less points per game from, from Nick Chubb. And like who by all accounts, like had a great year. Just like, so I thought it was kind of weird. Just like, they both started really hot the first five games and then the rest of the season just it just didn't look right it didn't look the same i i want to chalk it more up to the the trade but i i do think you know he's one of these guys that it's not like we've seen anything crazy the last few years even too so i i don't really know where he he can land where there's gonna be any amount of fantasy value unfortunately but I, I think he has a nice role in the XFL or the USFL down the line. In five different games, he had rushing lines of five carries for four yards, six carries for nine yards, four carries for six yards, seven carries for eight yards, and two for zero. Those were five different games. And there were other bad ones. There were other bad ones. Those were just the five worst that I picked. There is nothing to discuss with Kareem Hunt. Kareem Hunt is done. Unlike Leonard Fournette, he didn't show a lot of role in the passing game. He had played all 17 games. He had plenty of opportunity to prove it. He showed nothing at all. He is done. He's done. I don't expect him to play again in the NFL. He had no volume, no passing game, nothing. He was terrible on the ground, terrible in every way, despite another running back succeeding on that team. It's not like the Bucs where the other running back failed, you know, Mm -hmm. 
as well. There is nothing nice to say about Kareem Hunt, and I think Kareem Hunt's career is over. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I think you're exactly right. Where if he had any any bit of that that passing work, like that we thought he would kind of mix in more with, uh, along with being like kind of the backup to Nick Chubb, like, and that just didn't really come to fruition at all. Where you know he's getting a target or two a game, and like it it doesn't matter at that point. So I I, I think I'm more uh, I'm more in in agreement there with you on on Kareem Hunt, where I, I don't see much. Uh, value uh, any rebound coming back from him as I could from you know Zeke depending on landing spot yeah I'm good on Kareem Hunt yeah but But yeah well I do appreciate everyone I know this was a little bit longer but I appreciate everyone watching and listening to this episode and uh yeah make sure to like comment and subscribe to the channel hit the notifications bell so you can be notified about all of my future content, all of our future content, all the live shows every Tuesday, 7.30 p.m. Eastern. And I will see you all next time. Peace.